Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. Preparations for secondary education examination concludes. 504,000 students to appear in the exam. Students must secure 35% of 75 marks to pass. Prabhu Bank employee arrested for allegedly misappropriating the amount dispersed for Rukum's earthquake victims. Investigation ongoing in the embezzlement of 13.1 million rupees. The debt toll in the Gaza Strip surpasses 32,000 while Israel presses forward with plans to advance on the southern city, Gaza city of Rafah, despite pushback from the U.S. And Santoshi Shrestha wins the right to protein half marathon title towards the women's side. Deepak Adhikari, the champion, towards the men category. The National Examination Board has almost completed its preparations for the Secondary Education Examination, SEE, that will begin from Thursday next week. The board is taking the exam as per the new curriculum starting this year. 504,414 students from across the country are set to appear in the SEE this year. Examination controller Nandalal Portal said that question papers and answer sheets have already been distributed at 264 examination centres in all districts. Likewise, 77,000 workforce, including head of examination centres, controllers and security personnel will be mobilised during the examination period. Students must mandatorily secure 35% of the total 75 marks, which is 29 points in all subjects to pass the examination. An employee of Pravu Bank was arrested for allegedly misappropriating the money from the bank in Rukum's Rari Bazar of Archbiscot Municipality 11. The police have arrested 31-year-old then in charge of Pravu Bank's branch in Rari Bazar, Niraj Bikram Shah, for allegedly misappropriating the amount of first instalment which was supposed to be deposited into the accounts of earthquake victims of Archbiscot Municipality. He absconded after taking 13.125 million rupees, which was supposed to be deposited into the earthquake victims' accounts. Shah was arrested after Prabhu Bank's Karnali province head, Sharad Ras Temalsina, filed a complaint with the police on 21st of February last month. The police informed that Shah was arrested from Jamunaha of Nepalgan's sub-metropolis 15. The weather forecasting division has informed that the cloudy weather condition in the country caused by the effects of westerly low-pressure wind system will gradually improve from tomorrow. The division also said the system is moving from the west towards the east, which will cause rainfall in the east throughout the day today. According to the division, although the weather will improve from tomorrow, there are chances of light rainfall with thunderstorm in some parts of the hilly area. As per the division, as the westerly low-pressure wind system started from the western part of the country and is currently moving towards the east, Bagmati and Koshi provinces will experience its effect, effect the most, while the west will not have any of its effects. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Physical Infrastructure and Transport Management Raghubir Mahaset has said supply services will begin in the passenger railway in Janakpur Dham. The minister inspected the railway from Janakpur Dham to Jayanagar and said the process to use the service for supply of goods has begun. The minister took the rail to and from Jayanagar and said the number of passengers were increasing, hinting at adding another rail if needed. Mahasid said the railway service will be expanded till Jaleshore to connect with dry port. Welcome back. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. And the question is, political parties have identified the electoral system as the cause of political instability. What is your opinion? Your options are A, correct analysis, B, politicians are the reason, and C, weak laws are the cause. Voting is on, type NEWS, select your option, A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for international update. The death toll in the Gaza Strip has surpassed 32,000 as announced by the Hamas-run health ministry in the Palestinian enclave, while Israel presses forward with plans to advance on the southern Gaza city of Rafah despite pushback from the United States. 
At least 32,070 Palestinians have now been killed and 74,298 have been injured in the battered enclave since October 7, 2023. Yesterday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken made his eighth visit to Israel since the outbreak of the Palestine-Israel conflict. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was quoted by the country's government press office as stating that he met with Blinken and told him that he appreciated the fact that for more than five months, the two countries have been standing together in the war against Hamas. He added that Israel recognizes the need to evacuate the civilian population from the combat zones and is working to this end, according to the statement, but emphasized that there is no way to defeat Hamas without entering Rafah and eliminating the remnant of the battalions there. Thousands of displaced Palestinians have been forced into Rafah, a city on the region's southern border with Egypt, following months of Israeli attacks on the north and south of Gaza. Blinken has pleaded with Netanyahu not to invade the city without a plan in place to protect civilians. Netanyahu stressed that Israel will press forward with this siege regardless of the American position. Eight parcels were airdropped over Gaza today as Israel threatened to launch a major military operation in the southern city of Rafah, just across the border with Egypt, despite international appeals against it. As hopes for a truce during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan have faded and the humanitarian situation in Gaza has become more desperate, the U.S. and other countries have sought to use airdrops and ships to deliver more relief. But humanitarian agencies say that only about one-fifth of the required amount of supplies has been entering Gaza and that the only way to meet needs in the coastal enclave is to rapidly accelerate deliveries by road. UN's Secretary General Antony Guterres is expected to visit Egypt's border with Gaza today to renew pleas for a ceasefire that could bring relief to a territory devastated by more than five months of war between Israel and Hamas. A Chinese envoy has asserted that U.S. action shows it is unserious about achieving a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip demonstrated by its repeated rejecting of sound UN proposals and its preconditions for a ceasefire that effectively give a green light for continued killing. China's permanent representative to the United Nations, Zhang Jun, underscored that any action by the Security Council should withstand the test of history and the scrutiny of moral conscience. <laughs> Fangi 草案没有明确无误地表明反对态度，这将释放一个十分错误的信号。China's vote against the U.S. draft, which was cast alongside the nay votes of Algeria and Russia, was based on a responsible attitude towards upholding justice, the United Nations Charter, and the dignity of the Security Council, as well as the concerns and strong dissatisfaction from Arab countries towards the draft. Linda Thomas Greenfield. The U.S. representative to the United Nations accused China of rejecting the proposal on political grounds simply because it was penned by the U.S. Similar accusations were made by the U.K. Zhang recalled that the U.S. introduced its own draft resolution after vetoing on February 20 the overwhelming consensus among council members on an immediate ceasefire. Over the past month, the draft has undergone several iterations and contains elements that respond to the concerns of international community, but it has always evaded and dodged the most essential issue, that is a ceasefire, he stressed. More than 160 days have passed since the outbreak of the Gaza conflict. The death toll from an attack at a popular concert venue complex near Moscow has reached at least 115. The incident at Crocus City Hall, for which ISIS has claimed responsibility, has also left more than 140 others wounded as assailants stormed the venue with guns and incendiary devices. 
According to Kremlin, 11 people have been detained, including four suspects directly involved in the attack as they were trying to cross the border to Ukraine. The armed individuals opened fire with automatic weapons and threw a grenade or an incendiary bomb which started a fire. Earlier this month, the U.S. Embassy in Russia said it was monitoring reports that extremists have imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow, including concerts. Thousands of Thai devotees gathered at the Wat Bang Phra Temple near Bangkok today to attend a spiritual tattooing ritual and pay respect to the revered tattoo master Luang Phor Pern. The Buddhist monk Luang Phor Pern, known as the creator of spiritual tattoos, passed away in 2002 at the age of 79, but still has a strong following, particularly during the annual ceremony. During the ceremony, some devotees were seen undergoing a phenomenon where they seemed to embody the spirit of the animals depicted in their tattoos. Devotees were seen running, growling, shouting and gesticulating widely throughout the temple grounds. The sacred images covering their bodies were believed, are believed in fact to offer protection, bring good luck and even heal sickness to those who receive them. Master Tuk, the monk of Wat Bang Phra Temple, who inscribes the tattoo, said that their purpose is to remind people to adhere to the five precepts in Buddhist belief and to show respect to the parents and teachers by doing good deeds. He explained that people in trance states are believed to have fragile spirits. Devotees who break the rules of the five precepts are given a chance at the annual ceremony to recharge the holiness of their tattoos. In return for their inscription, one is required to buy a flower, incense and a pack of cigarettes, along with 100 Thai baht, which is equivalent to 2.76 US dollars, as an offering for the tattoo. Bagmati province's Santoshi Shrestha lifted the third edition of the Right to Protein Half Marathon title towards the women's side, while Trivan Army Club's Deepak Adhikari won the men's title. Santoshi won the half marathon title, completing the race in 1 hour, 20 minutes and 19 seconds to claim her fifth title, including domestic and international events within a year. She has won the title twice in the past three editions. She did not participate in last year's edition as she had to go to Bangladesh for another event. Nepal Police Club's Ram Maya Buddha finished the half marathon in second place, clocking 1 hour, 21 minutes and 56 seconds. Likewise, armed police forces Four secured the third spot with a timing of 1 hour, 23 minutes and 2 seconds. Towards the men's side, Trivan Army's Deepak Adhikari became the champion for the second consecutive time, finishing the distance just 9 seconds ahead of APF's Gopi Chandra Parki. He finished the race in 1 hour, 7 minutes and 33 seconds, while Parki was close behind with a timing of 1 hour, 7 minutes and 42 seconds. Tirtha Pun came in third, clocking 1 hour, 7 minutes and 43 seconds. The half marathon that started from capital's Dasod Stadium in Tripureshur went up to Radhe Radhe in Bhaktapur and ended at the stadium. The winners of the women's and men's half marathon bagged 100,000 rupees in cash prize, while those who secured second place received 75,000 rupees each, third place winners received 50,000 rupees, fourth place winners 40,000, and fifth place winners claimed 30,000 rupees each. Meanwhile, towards the 10 kilometer men's race, Trivan Army's Mukesh Pal claimed the first position, Sanjay Stressa finished second, and Gajinder Rai came in third. Likewise, in the women's 5 km open category, Trivan Army's Srijana Pandi won the first place. Nepal Police's Raj Pajai claimed the second spot, while Nirmala Kesi finished third. Ram Gaji Mijar won the men's 3 km wheelchair race, while Ramesh Khatri finished second and Prem Bika secured third position. Likewise, Aishwarya Kumal won the women's 3 km wheelchair title, while Yami Jhakri won the second position and Rajani Rai finished in the third position. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.